In general, we can write a linear differential equation in the form ly equals h of x, where l is a linear differential operator. If h of x equals 0, we can solve it by finding the roots of the characteristic polynomial by our theorem. If l is our linear differential operator and r is a root, then c e to the power rx is a solution. We won't worry about how to find the roots, assuming we can find them algebraically, numerically, or through wild guesses and wishful thinking. But there are some other problems that arise when trying to use this approach to solve differential equations. So one of the problems originates with differential equations like y double prime plus y equals 0. In operator form, this is d2y plus y equals 0. And so we have characteristic polynomial d squared plus 1. The roots of this polynomial are complex numbers, plus or minus i, and so the solutions are c1 e to power ix and c2 e to power minus ix. The what? What does it mean when we raise e to a complex number? To answer the question of what it means to raise e to a complex number, we'll have to introduce some new ideas. In 1722, the English mathematician Abraham de Moivre, wait a minute, de Moivre, is that really English? And, well, yes. Oh sure, de Moivre was born in France, but Christian fanatics forced de Moivre and thousands of others to flee across the channel to Great Britain, where their influx added a new word to the English language, refugee. And so Abraham de Moivre should be considered an English mathematician. So this English mathematician Abraham de Moivre described the following relationship. For a and b real numbers, the expression e to power a plus bi can be rewritten as e to power a times cosine b plus i sine of b. This is useful enough that this is one of the few formulas that it's worth actually committing to memory. And so now our two apparently complex solutions, c1 e to power i x, well that's really c1 cosine x plus i c1 sine of x. Similarly, c2 e to power minus i x, well that'll be c2 cosine minus x plus i c2 sine minus x. But remember, cosine of minus x is just cosine of x, and sine of minus x is minus sine of x, and so this becomes and so our second solution, c2 e to minus i x, is going to be c2 cosine x minus i c2 sine x. So when we add our two solutions, we can express that sum as c1 plus c2 cosine x plus i c1 minus c2 sine of x. Since we can absorb our constants, we can write this as follows. This c1 plus c2, well, that's just a constant, so we'll call it, oh, c1. And i times c1 minus c2, well, that's really just another constant, and we'll call that c2. And so this is the general solution to the differential equation, y double prime plus y equals 0. I'd check this if I were you. In general, this leads to the following. Suppose r equals a plus or minus bi are complex roots of the characteristic polynomial. Then e to the power ax c1 cosine bx plus c2 sine bx are going to be solutions to the corresponding differential equation. So, for example, let's consider the fourth order linear differential equation. d4y minus y is equal to 0. Rewriting this in operator notation. And so our characteristic polynomial is d to the fourth minus 1. We can find the roots of the characteristic polynomial by setting it equal to 0 and solving. And again, this is the one case out of 
billions where we could actually solve this problem algebraically. If we do that, we get four solutions, plus or minus one, plus or minus i. And so once we have the roots of our characteristic polynomial, we can translate these into components of our general solution. The roots plus or minus 1, because they're real, give us the solutions c1e to power x and c2e to power minus x. Meanwhile, the two complex roots, plus or minus i, those will give us trigonometric solutions. So remember that any pure imaginary number bi could be written as 0 plus bi, so our solutions will look like e to power 0x times c3 cosine x plus c4 sine x. And while this is a perfectly good algebraic solution, you lose street cred among mathematicians if you don't remember that e to power 0x is 1, and since it'll be a factor of 1, we don't actually need to write it down as part of our product. And so our general solution will be c1e to the x plus c2e to the minus x plus c3 cosine x plus c4 sine x. Or we might consider another example. Rewriting our differential equation in operator form. In a kind and gentle universe, every quadratic equation would be factorable. Or if I were a kind and gentle math teacher, I would never give you any problems that required you to do anything difficult. You know where this is going, don't you? So remember, most quadratic equations can't be factored, and so most of them will have to be solved using the quadratic formula. So our characteristic equation is d squared plus d plus 5 equal to 0 with solutions. Hint, this is not factorable. We'll have to use the quadratic formula. And they turn out to be complex roots. So the real part of the root will become an exponential, e to power minus 1 half x. The complex component, without the i, is going to become the argument of our cosine and sine functions. And our constants of anti-differentiation are going to show up as coefficients of cosine and sine, and so our general solution will look like this.